Hey there, Mo Phillips again. I'm excited that you're here for another conversation, this time with my new friend, Daryl Grant. Where even to begin with Daryl Grant, who has become a legend in Oregon, uh, not only in the jazz scene where he is a highly sought after gig, getting Daryl Grant to come rock your show. He's an amazing jazz pianist, but also a composer, songwriter, and an educator. He's been a professor at PSU for many years, inspiring uh, some incredible jazz artists coming out of PSU, and he's an all-around uh, fantastic organizer of song and community, and it was a real pleasure to talk with him about the Oregon State song and dig deep into what the power of music is and what it can do. I hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did having it with Daryl. He's amazing. So strap in. Here we go. Daryl Grant, great to see you. Welcome to this conversation. My pleasure, Mo Phillips. Kindly, please, if you wouldn't mind, uh, go ahead and sing the Oregon State song. (laughs) <laughs> it's not the one that goes oh say no that's not it uh that's not that one I, I know the colorado state song no wait do i um if i had a wagon i would go to colorado i hope not that's not one. it we used to uh, do that when i was a kid it might be it i'm uh, not sure <laughs> i that's um now you embarrass me because i don't know either of my state songs <laughs> Like you, I too grew up in Colorado, and I have no idea. I know that the Colorado flower is the Columbine. That's about Columbine. That's right. <laughs> but, but back to Oregon. So you, you uh, I believe it's called Oregon, my Oregon. And uh, even after these many interviews that I've been conducting, I still don't really know how it goes. Um, so it's cool that you also don't know how it goes. Yeah. Um, nobody does, it turns out, and, <laughs> which is part of the reason we're here. Um, so do you know you know a little bit of history about it at all and how it's terribly racist and um pretty bad I presume. i've heard about i have heard about it and i've heard the uh the quote problematic nature of the text <laughs> i love that that's that's perfect yes this is problematic um so let's presume that the legislature of oregon is like yes we're going to scrap it and start anew um, which it sounds like they are deciding to do. Um, now, as a songwriter, which you are, and as someone who uh, teaches songwriting uh, uh, and musicianship with uh, other people, let's figure out how that works. So I wanted to start by asking you, Daryl, um, about your process when you're creating, and then we'll kind of zip out into mm-hmm. the overall project. But like, how does Daryl Grant start a song? Huh. Well, so I've been writing songs. I mean, I, maybe, maybe I wrote the first song when I was like eight years old. So I've been writing songs for 50 years. So theoretically, my process has evolved over that time. Uh, but it's also different. You know, it depends on um, the type of song. It depends on, you know, instrumental versus uh, vocal, um, you know, large ensemble versus solo sure. um, but in general there is a seed of inspiration sometimes it's a musical seed it's an idea but more often than not i mean you know, so a melody or something like that um a set of chords um but if i'm writing songs that are you know really songwriter songs like songs with lyrics mm-hmm. um then i will usually start off with some kind of an idea um some kind of a seed of an of an idea um and it could be a lyrical idea it could be a poem it could be just a a concept so for instance um, in the suite of uh, mine called The Territory, which is nine movements, and each one is sort of about both either geographical or cultural history, culturally historic um, aspect of Oregon. Uh, oh. I, have a, I had a really good friend who was um, interned in the Mendoka internment camp when she was four. Um, oh, wow. So hearing about her story, you know, she's old. I mean, she's obviously older, right? Hmm. Um, but, you know, so hearing over the time of knowing her about that story and realizing, I want to set a song about that. So then right. I start doing research and, you know, sort of looking at narratives, going down to, you know, the, the you know, the um, museums and, and hmm. sort of 
trying to immerse myself in that story. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, words will come, phrases will come, and, and then oftentimes a music, the musical inspiration will come from that. And you're like, oh, that's it. That's the, that's the right. scene. And then it's just a process of trying to tie that all together in, in time and come up with something that seems coherent. But to right. me, the, the, the research part um, is really important. And you know, I did another song in that piece um, that was about the Golden West Hotel. Um, the first African American hotel west of the Mississippi, right down downtown Portland. Um, wow! So reading about that and the families, and then trying to find ways of putting that information into yeah. a song form, um, into lyrics and things like that, and then characterizing it with music. So for me, right. that was 1930s jazz seemed like the great, the best setting for that. You know, so right. So you are letting the lyrics inform a lot of the melodic and, and uh, sure. ideas and, and some of the form ideas. That's that's really cool. Um, it's, and it sounds like you've done a, a fair amount of work on Oregon history in, in putting music and lyrics to Oregon history, which is um, awesome. Yeah, well, because, I mean, I do write, I like to write music about things. I mean, mm-hmm. I do, you know, I recognize that there is certainly room for, you know, pure music. Um, but I, I feel like, and it's not like I'm writing music that's necessarily programmatic. Like you hear it and you close right. your eyes and you see the thing. I mean, I like that too, stuff that's more like film score music, but sure. mostly it's about some seed of an idea that, mm-hmm. um, that of something that actually, that actually happened or that is yeah. real people experience. That's beautiful. Okay. Well, that's perfect. Cause that leads us into, you've done some work on, on Oregon history. Like now let's presume before we give even further out, let's presume that uh, you've been charged. Daryl Grant's been charged with writing the Oregon State song. Where does Daryl Grant start with that? Oh, oh Daryl Grant calls Mo Phillips. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, cut, scratch that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so if I was charged to write the Oregon State song, what would yeah. I do? Um, well, you know, it's really interesting. You, we are in an era. I think it's a good era um, mm. where individual accomplishment sort of is starting to maybe take second place to um, like sort of collective. Um, <laughs> what is it? Um, collective evolution. You know, I mean, that's not totally you, the right word. But, no, I know what um, you're saying, but like it's the rise. We, yeah. We, look, we look at ways to elevate the whole as opposed to elevate ourselves. And I think that's really changed. I mean, you know, I grew up in the 1970s and that was the beginning of the rock star era where like right. musicians were heroes. I mean, they were up on stage, they were saying and doing things that we couldn't do. And that, you know, we just looked right. to them and it's like, wow, they, their expression, their personal expression was what drove the culture. And I think that we are in a, a different era now where, you know, with social media and, and also just the time in which people feel like they have a right to see themselves reflected. Sure. And not, it's not just one, you know, lone genius who gets to speak for the culture. And right. so I think if I were asked, you know, today to write a straight song, then I would try and figure out the best process to honestly reflect as many voices. And the thing is, the first thing you have to figure out is what is a state song for? You know, that was my next question. <laughs> Let's go. Right. Because. Why? Well, Why? right, right. Yeah. So you, you think about it. So I've been thinking a lot about this because I've been doing this um, examination of monuments and memorials. Um, mm. sort of we're looking, there's, you know, we're in this moment where people are thinking about what is a monument? You know, we tore, we're tearing them all down. And, you know, so it's like a monument is a, is a, is a commitment, a commemoration to either remember, to remember something. Somebody said, Sorry. I read that. Somebody said a monument is a, is a, is a way of a vehicle for remembering something. A memorial is a is a vehicle for forgetting things. Um, oh, you know, it's it's sure. quite, pretty powerful. But um, yeah. so I think, well, okay. So are you thinking about the state song as a monument of some way? Are you trying to remember something? And if you are, what is it that you're trying to, you know, sort of capture in memory? Yeah. Um, are you are you trying? Are you using the state song as a vehicle for? expressing solidarity as a way of elevating voices that, you know, are you trying to tell a story? Are you trying to make you like make a narrative about what happened um, and what, why, why we should care about it? Right. Or, or are you simply trying to evoke like as much emotion in as many, as the broadest swath of people as possible? 
I mean, all those things, you know, right. are possible. But I don't know that you could do all of them in the same song. If you had a song, this makes me think of an idea. If you made, if you had a song that was based around geographic features, right? And so rather than people, like what about a song that didn't even talk about the people? It's like the people come, the people go. Mount Hood, the Columbia River, Fort Rock. Like, you know, if, if the song commemorated, if the song celebrated the land, um, that would be kind of cool. And the second thing I thought of is what if the song celebrated a diversity by by actually not just being in English, but actually right. using like indigenous language, you know, right. like the, a language that represented um, a bro broad variety of cultures. Right. That would be really interesting. And That'd so, be really interesting. And the third yeah. idea is what if the song was um, an aspiration? Like it was the song pointed the way towards towards something that we wanted to. We, we had discussions in the, the artist to citizen class yesterday about decolonization. So right. if, we, if we agreed that our primary purpose, our primary goal, mission, was decolonization. Okay. And all the things, you know, broad things yeah. that, that that implies, right? Then we write a song that leads, that, that explains that and sort of, and, and, and sort of puts that out as an aspiration. It's like, what is, you know, it represents us not as we have been, but as we hope to be. I mean, that would be amazing. I love the idea of an aspirational song, but then you have the, the task of aligning aspirations. <laughs> well, so you'd have to figure out, yes, I, I recognize that, but that to me seems easier because you're talking about ideals, right? Hmm. I mean, so if I, I mean, decolonization is just the one that I think of because in a great way big, and it gets yeah, yeah. right back, it gets right back, back to the very beginning before there yeah. was an Oregon we colonized it you know well, it, so, and it actually <laughs> goes to the old lyrics of the old song which mentions conquerors and martyrs so yeah, like exactly colonization is a huge was right. right on point it's right so on you'd point. Be like you'd be like okay 180 from that 180 <laughs> back in the direction we came <laughs> giving land back yes <laughs> you know, not killing people but yes. actually not killing people, people. You know I mean? like yes <laughs> so i mean i and so the question to me is like you're either for that or against it right but you don't have i don't know that you have a you wouldn't have the argument that well that just doesn't include my aspirations like do you know what i mean like it's too right big. it's just well, it's a, yes i mean i totally agree uh, but I'm often uh, disappointed in other people's imaginations. <laughs> so two things come to my mind. One is um, Maya Angelou's poem, Still I Rise, right? Because it's like, it just rocks right in there to, you know, I oh. am, you know, <laughs> I am the hope and the oh, something of the slave. I am. Yeah. It's like, so it's, it's the most aspirant of the most aspirational. Totally. You know, yes. Yes. So it reminds me of um, the Negro National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing. Um, yes. And so that is also a, um, expressing a variety of sort of aspirations, but a collective, a sense of collective unity. And I guess, you know, can you say things that every culture has in common and aspires to? And so the other thing is, you know, a state song, maybe state songs shouldn't last but 20 years. Maybe this should be rewritten every 20 years because new generation, right? And so what? Like, why not? Why why not have a new state song every 20 years? Like, what's the I, point? I love that? it. Yeah, I mean, if you can change your jersey outfit, you know, like your team colors or whatever. Or your <laughs> you know, team name. Your team name. Uh, right. I love that. I think that's part of the, that conversation about the, the living song, you know? Like, mm -hmm. allow it to have, um, you know, malleability. Allow it to change. Uh, but even just straight up scrap it and start afresh, start new. Oh, that's so cool. So well, I mean, some, why, why not, right? Why Let's not? No. Downside. Tell me the downside of that. Um, right. Is that, you know, the one I learned when I was a kid and I really loved is no longer the state song. Like, who knows it? Like, who of this generation even right. knows it? You, I think you'd have the argument, well, what about tradition? But then every time I ask somebody to sing it, they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. So. <laughs> right. Um, oh, okay. Uh, why? Like, what's the power? What, do, what is the idea behind having a bunch of fourth graders sing a song like this? You know, what are we doing? Well, that's a good question. So um, we sing the national anthem 
to assert a uh, sense of unity, um, to sort of put a frame of unity over every event. So, I mean, because, I mean, what's the, we sing it at gatherings, we sing it at crowds. It's not that it's sporting events. It's just any event of 100 people or more, 500 right. people or 1,000 people or more, that right. we feel like we want to somehow have a reminder of us together. I, I kind of think that, in a way, land, land acknowledgments are taking the place of the national anthem in some circles. It's like, okay, well, this is, we're, we're, we are also recognizing our, you know, unity, but we're also recognizing it as complicity in mm. something. Um, right. As opposed to sort of the patriotic, you know, celebration of of our whatever we did, yeah, 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 this nation. So, um, so I think part of so if that's the goal of a song is to create a sense of a sense of the collective, um, then you want to you want to use it in that way, um, mm. but you just want to be careful about the collective that you're trying to get kids to belong in, and. You know, patriotism is helpful because, you know, war and taxes. Uh, so <laughs> uh, people's like, I, I must uh, do this because yeah. I'm an American. And right. That's what Americans do. Um, so I guess you would say that the, that indoctrination is also one of the, the uses of songs. So do sure. we want to do we want to indoctrinate? Right. You know? I mean, oh, that's interesting. Oh, it's uh, it's you know a bit of a double-edged sword. Um, yeah, exactly. For sure. What do you? Can you offhand like, besides my own my Angelou's poem and and Lift Every Voice and Sing, like, what are some songs or some pieces of art that inspire you in that kind of manner? Like, can you think of anything that, you know, you get you hear and you're like, I'm feeling ready, I'm feeling good. Uh, or, or or I'm feeling a sense of community, like I'm feeling with my people. That's <laughs> a mean, hard one, I know. Well, it's it's not it's. I mean, I'm I'm trying to figure out which framework to think about this because you realize that the the majority of the music that I'm involved in, I'm playing, I'm performing it. Like, do you know what I mean? Right. I'm not yes. like I'm not in that like you. I'm I'm not necessarily in that situation where I'm just sort of part of a crowd being inspired right. by something. Yeah, um, you're actually. I'm sort of looking around, going, "Oh, this is working. I wonder why that's working. Oh, I wonder." Why, you know, I'm like, I've been in analyzing it. It's like oh, I could use that. That's cool. Yeah. Check it out. That's, <laughs> you know. So oh I'm my gosh. Really, I'm not sorry. And yeah. Besides those two pieces, I I am really moved. Believe it or not, I'm moved by traditional Christmas songs. Like you know, I can get and sing "O Come, All Ye Faithful." I'm like, yeah. yeah got me at that i know it's just and it's part of his upbringing part of it is just like freaking beautiful melody and harmony and you know all this stuff yeah. about it yeah but there is there is that um you know so a lot of that communal singing that i did was in church and and um you know so in terms of singing together i think those are the things that really get me i mean i see performances of things um but the other thing is you know, you could consider this not as a not only as a song that's collectively sung, but um, a song that performers, like musicians and artists, would want to perform, like would yeah. be like interested. I mean, because you know, it's an honor to sing the Star Spangled Banner at a sports right. sports game, right? Yeah. So, I would could you find a way that create something that people would feel equally honored to sing a state song? Right. Yeah. Um, is the Oregon State is that song out there? I mean, it probably is. We'd have to grab it somehow. It's in the ether, uh, but I love that idea of like a song that, you know, I, I mean, that's the goal, a song that even a jaded artist, some indie rock guy or, or, or some like hip hop head that's yeah. like had cool. the thumb on him the whole time is like, can no, I, I actually like this song. I'm going to. Can you it. see it? Can you see a hip hop having a hip hop verse? Can you see have a spoken Yes. Word? I would uh, love that, right? So wow. here's one idea we've had in these conversations. is like, how does the, when the state song is, is finally selected, how do we it, uh, celebrate that? You know, and is there a show where it's played 20 different times in 20 different genres um, mm -hmm. with, you know, one melodic thread, you know, that w is woven throughout. So people do their best to, to hang on to that melodic thread and, and maybe hang on to the form a bit. But obviously, we all approach, you know, songs from our own kind of genre and feel. Uh, you, there's no reason you would know this. We lived in Australia for about two and a half years, and I 
immediately when I got there, I got an agent to play the hotels and, um, you know, they have, they don't have jukeboxes. They got a guy in the corner, a lady in the corner singing covers for four hours. Um, and it turns out I'm phenomenally bad at that because I would just do it in my own way. I would sing the songs and, and fairly faithfully melodically, but I would moify them and places at, were very friendly, but they'd ask me to never come back. Um, <laughs> and, and the punters, you know, the guys drinking would be like, that's not how that song goes. In you know, pubs, they'd be drinking. In pubs like this. You yeah. got musicologists in your pubs going, no, oh, yeah. that's a major third, not a minor third. No. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> oh, it was, oh, so anyways, all of that to say that, you know, I'm extremely guilty of taking a song and, and doing it in my own way um, for better or for worse. And I, and, but I think the for better part of that is that we have this state song and then we have a celebration um, or, and even a website where people can upload themselves singing it in their own way. Uh, would be beautiful, you know, way to connect to the community um, if the song is built in a way that you can't, I mean, all songs are, you can interpret any song, but anyways, that's kind of part of my dream of it, is it everyone coming together to have this huge show where it's, you know, done hip-hop style and done with, somehow with a, a vena and um, some tabla, like, I don't know, can you do an Indian Carnatic style of the Oregon State song? I don't even know, but Wow. It, it's interesting to me what the possibilities could be, right? So wow. So you could have a you could have it be a text that can be translated, like a short text that can be translated, or you could have a melodic phrase that people could draw on and use in whatever way they wanted. I mean that's a really that's a really cool idea. And yeah. the other thing about it is that I mean, this is this is interesting. This is coming up from a couple recent meetings I've been in and and um, we've been talking about sort of Western approaches to doing things versus indigenous approaches to doing things. And so one of the most obvious, right, is that cultures of color are generally thought of as to have a, to, to have a different relationship to time, right, and punctuality. Right. So you've got like, every culture is like, it's like, oh, this is, you know, this is Mexican time. This is, uh, you know, um, CP time, colored people time. This is, you know, IST, I mean, every, Indian every, every time. Yep. Every every culture, and but the uniform thing is that they seem to not be rigid about, about time, right. <laughs> like, and that the you know the Western like the Western standard like West is like on time you know time right. timely, mm -hmm. and so I'm thinking about how many of our processes and how much time we give ourselves to do things are predicated on this Western cultural idea of time. We have two mm -hmm. months to do this. We have a week to do this. We have seven days, you know, six hours to do this. Like right. we, we rarely go like, when it's done, it's done. We're going to do it. And when it's done, it's done. So I'm imagining the process of making this song as one that was like, we're just going to do this process. And if we come up with a really cool idea, like, you know, having a day where all these people get to go to the studio and record their own thing, we'll make room for that. And if we decide right. that we want to have time, make time for people to do TikTok videos where they sort of, you know, mess around with it, we're going to do that rather than it's like, yeah. well, you know, this has to be done by, you know, the next legislative session. And so we have to, you know what I mean? Like there's a way in which that is not to harp on it. That's a colonizing mode. And of course, because we all engage in capitalism and we all sort of work to suck resource out of the system, we go with it. You know, we show up on time, we make timelines and budgets and we do this stuff, but we, sh but, but it would be useful. We would get some benefit from maybe uh, allowing that that's not the only way to do a process and maybe looking at a, a process like this is something that could be done in a different framing of time to be able to allow that evolution of ideas and that mixing and crossing of ideas. And so that is a way of honoring the state and yes. the the state, you know? Daryl, that's amazing. And you just also, uh, unbeknownst to you, threaded a couple of different conversations that I've had um, with other people. Uh, but this idea, again, that kind of goes back to the, the living song, you know, mm -hmm. the song that can has room to grow. Um, and it's interesting, too, because I, I feel like you need that one hook. Um, ha! <sighs> that kind of people can get back to maybe you know well, but maybe you don't man maybe, maybe you don't that, maybe that's the that's the process like i'm just imagining i was yeah, just yeah. this list of folks but i'm imagining there's a the musician um 
uh, Indian classical musician Nisha, Nisha Joshi, Nisha Joshi, Joshi, who I worked with years and years ago. And so when you said that about Carnatic music, I was like, okay, if we just if we if you were sitting down with her, we were sitting down and say, Nisha, um, we're inviting you to write the state song. And then once you get past all this, no, 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 really, for real. And can I write it in my language? Yes, you can write it in your language. Can I use yes. my? Yes, you can use your style. You are a state song. So I imagine, what if you went to every single culture? You open it up, and it's like, we need a hook. You go to the hip hop cats. We need a hook. You go to the Indian community. We need a hook. You go to the Latino, you know, Mexican music community. The yeah. the Caribbean. I mean, you know what I mean? It's like we need a hook. Yeah. And then you've got all this stuff. I mean, first of all, it would be awesome to hear those. Yeah. Just back to back. Just like, oh, yeah. you know, and you sort of you play with that for a while. And then, you know, you say, okay, you go to the, all these different communities who are stakeholders and you say, you give us 10 things that we need to talk about in the state song. 10 phrases, 10 places, 10 yeah. whatever. And you, and you take that, you know, you aggregate that. And then from that, you distill this, what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. Maybe there's yeah. overlap. Maybe, maybe from that process, people nominate right. People to oh, serve on a songwriting thing, you know. You're oh, I love just... the idea of overlap too, because you have like you never knew that this melody from, um, you know, this mariachi band was actually quite similar to the idea that you know the the Chinookan tribe had. Right. Um, right. And, and like, oh, those similarities, and and then there's like a, a lyrical idea that comes out of hip hop that is actually there's some hippie jam band. Like, oh wow, you guys are thinking talking about the same thing. So, so then, how do we aggregate it? Like, do you have a a panel of like 20 artists or I mean, song well, I mean, so you could do it. You could do it in any number of like democratic or transparent processes, right? Maybe you say, okay, this is, this is all the material we have. Now we're going to nominate a Congress of delegates, you know, and everybody's right. like, it just votes. Right. So maybe yeah. there's like, maybe we didn't know that there was a huge Icelandic block, Icelandic block here. And they're like, we're going to pull with the Greenland folks and the French to make sure yeah. that our delegate gets on this sovereign committee. And right. so, or maybe, you know what I mean? Maybe there's a way that you sort of pull those threads together. And, and this group of people, it's kind of like the Continental Congress, right? I mean, they were yeah. just, they well, were charged oh to gosh. writing a constitution. Like they wouldn't, everybody wasn't in the room, but everyone you know, was in the room. These, well, you think too, like the amount of communities we have, you know, get the Somali community in Portland or the Hmong community. Yeah. Like, you know, there's, it's so, okay, so this song is so long. I'm so happy about it. Well, it's not, but it's, it's really about the process, right? Because right. once you have the buy-in, then right. whatever the end result is gets sort of disseminated throughout mm. the cultures because there's some authentic representation and everybody mm -hmm. needs to love it. And the minute, the minute you do it, all the trolls and cr critics will come out and say, oh, it sucked. And that was wrong for this. And you're like, well, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. that happens. But I do think that you would have built some, you would have built a state song in a way that probably no other state has ever done it. You would have created a process that could be cultivated and developed. And then you get to say, oh, by the way, we're going to do this again in 20 years. So, you know, you live with it. <laughs> it's just like, we're coming back, you know, 2050, new one. Yeah. Oh, sweat. Uh, you know? Oh, I love that too. That you, you know, oh man, just kind of not baked in, but but just su suggested. Like, hey, don't worry, guys. It's, this is temporary, like everything. Like everything, <laughs> right? Like everything, and that's yeah. and I feel like so as I'm starting to sort of do this work that we're doing together. You know, this whole stuff on yeah. the app, and the capstone. I'm starting to see all these ways in which my thinking is sort of is kind of in one direction. I didn't know I was missing other directions. And so this idea of, of temp temporariness, impermanence, mm. is an indigenous idea. Mm. Like, and so to start to weave that idea into your practices and your business and stuff mm. is to decolonize your thinking and your Ooh. system, right? So yeah. the idea that, I mean, it's, and so that's why I'm asking why not every 20 years? Right. Because the reasons why not are the stuff you really need to look at like because really? we're, we're, we're we're hunkering down this song is sitting here for in perpetuity and you're gonna deal with right. it suckers like, right right because yeah, right. this song is about us and you remembering us not what you and what yeah. you want to do and your children and yeah. your grandchildren and what the world might look like in 50 years we don't care right. the song no, is it's us now our lives and what we did and we want us we want to be remembered oh. Daryl, I love it. It's deep, you know? 
contemporary Oregon State song. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm seeing rack I'm seeing a rack grant. I'm seeing Oregon Cultural Trust all over this man. Right. So. Well, um, that's actually who's helping with some of it is OCT. Uh, yeah. I believe no. Oh, I can't even remember. Maybe it's an OCF. Yeah, one of them. OC. One of them. <laughs> crystals, crystals all over it. Um, I know. It's been really interesting the the political uh, kind of backroom stuff she's had to deal with. Um, maybe we talked about that at another time. Okay. It's it's not an easy task to be like, hey, we got to ch change this song. Um, harder than it seems, but. But it's going to happen because I think the legislature recognizes like Dude, how god I mean, it's hard. How can it be harder than it seems? Look at, look at, who, you, look at who we're talking to. Look at you. You got you. you got, I mean, no, come on, man. You, you got these bureaucracies. You know how it is. Dude, dude. Have, <laughs> you, met, have you met Edna Vasquez? Have you met, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so those, I mean, those people don't have a chance against us. <laughs> oh, no. And I can't wait to talk to Edna. Um, we've been trying to get in touch with her. Um, yeah. And I, I can't wait for that conversation too. Daryl, yeah. this has been amazing and lovely, Always, man. man. I so, so cool. appreciate you. Um, are you going to sing us out on some inspirational thing? <laughs> I mean, you don't have to, but I got Daryl Grant on the line. Like, oh, might as well. Or, or, is that keyboard working? Can you, uh, you turn on and shred some business? Sounds not great. So my song, based on um, based on Maya Angelou's poem "We Rise," um, um, is still "I Rise." It's called "We Rise," and it's the finale to this suite that I wrote. Oh, oh, will you turn it up? Crank it up, man. It's gonna distort, so I can't really do that. It's like okay. it's not plugging through the system, but okay, but, I can hear it though. The chorus is um, uh, "Rise up, brand new day." You know that love will find a way. Rise up, brand new day. You know that love will find a way. Together we cannot be broken. Up from the bitter past we rise to build a world where peace is spoken. The time is now, at last we rise. So yeah, that's my that's my anthemic my anthemic vibe, man. Oh, I love it. That's awesome, man. You're cool. the best, Daryl. I appreciate oh, you oh, so much. So great. Um, man. well, we'll be in touch, and I hope that you'll be uh willing to perform your version of our temporary Oregon State song. I, I kind of have to now, right? You can't ask me if, I don't, do. if I don't know it. Do. <laughs> awesome, man. Have Peace. a lovely day. Appreciate you. All right. Take care.